Hi, it's Dr. Steve from Misericordia University, and welcome to the third video in our course, Principles of Interface Design. During this video, let's focus on designing what I call a PowerCast, which is an interactive PowerPoint presentation using action buttons and various navigational devices to, to create a standalone application for learners, and one which will be very interactive. For class week number four, we have four videos. In the first video, you will recall that we looked at designing a menu and good sound navigation. In our second video, we considered using PowerPoint to create a virtual museum. PowerPoint is a very robust platform. So in, our, in this video, let's look at using PowerPoint again to both create a video and also to create what I term a PowerCast. And then in our last video for this week, let's take a look at designing a Prezi. PowerPoint allows us at least two ways to record video and audio. First, as a teacher who uses PowerPoint slides during class, you can start with a regular PowerPoint and you can record audio voiceover or narration and also include animation as you normally would in class and then save it as a video. The second way to do this is to create what I term a PowerCast. A PowerCast is using the audio and the video capabilities but saving it not as a video but rather as a PowerPoint presentation and using tools like navigation through action buttons, uh, creating a menu, possibly with a metaphor, using the narration, uh, using action buttons and triggered animations to allow the user to interact with the PowerPoint presentation. So if someone was not aware you were using PowerPoint, they might think that you just created an app for them to use. That's how robust PowerPoint is. So let's take a look in this video at the two ways to record video and audio. How can faculty use video to support their classrooms? Number one, you can repeat lecture material covered in class. You can provide a second look at the material, a different way of approaching it, a little differently than how you approach that in class. Number two, you can record video to support remote learning in case learners are not able to be in school at the time, whether they individually are out or if there is a, a weather or other emergency that causes classes to be canceled that day. Number three, we can support, support class activities like, like uh, providing remediation for, for learners who need a little more help with the content. You can provide enrichment for the more advanced learners or those learners who are more highly motivated. Students with certain disabilities can gain assistance and will appreciate seeing the material and working at their own pace, as will uh, our English learners. Teachers can also use video to support a flipped classroom model in which they send uh, video homework home, which would be the lecture that's typically done in class, and they can reserve class time for hands-on application and hands-on experience directly with the content. Students can also realize additional benefits such as self-paced learning. They have the opportunity to, to go a little slower or go a little quicker through the material. And this also can free up class time for other group activities or other hands-on interactive activities. To begin, let's look at the use of PowerPoint to create video. So if you use PowerPoint in your current classes, start with, with one of those PowerPoint presentations and then record narration or lecture on each slide and then trigger animations as you normally would as you speak and use the PowerPoint presentation just like you would in class. 
The nice thing with PowerPoint is it actually records a separate narration for each slide, which means you can begin record recording on any slide in any order, and you can review and you can re-record any individual slide if you want to. So it's not like a, a lecture where you have one continuous long lecture being recorded. These are all separate individual recordings. Keep in mind that students today expect micro lecture, meaning that your video is going to be brief and to the point, and it's not going to be like a 45 minute uh, activity unless it's warranted. For the most part, most teachers will be recording micro lectures, much shorter presentations. If you have a much longer topic, you might want to break it up into smaller individual presentations. Before you begin, right click on the volume icon in the system tray of your computer and take a look at the sound settings. Ensure that the microphone volume, the input level, is sufficiently high to be able to properly pick up your spoken words. Now, I always suggest for the very first slide, just do a, a quick recording, play it back, and see what it sounds like, just to make sure everything is working before you commit to doing an entire presentation. Once you have a PowerPoint presentation prepared, the recording the narration part is actually very easy. Go to the slideshow menu and select record slideshow. And from there, you can say record from the current slide or record from the very beginning, which will simply take you to the first slide. Ensure that the narrations and the use timings checkboxes are still turned on. They should be on by default. Should either of these be turned off, your video will not play properly. If play narrations is, is switched off, then your sound will not accompany the video. If the use timings is switched off, then the video will not know how long to keep that slide uh, on the screen uh, behind the sounds, so it won't be synced up. And the number two problem, in, in this case with the if use timings is switched off, is that if you're playing different, different uh, animations while by flying in bullets or, or having a graphic move on the screen for illustration while you're speaking, uh, again, it will not be synced up and those will not play. So again, they should be turned on by default. Let's make sure they're still on. Once you select record slideshow and indicate whether it's this current slide or from the very beginning, uh, this screen will appear. Notice in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the record button, the stop button, and also the ability to replay and hear it right here. Uh, should you not like uh, something that you have uh, recorded or have any issues, notice on the right side it says clear. And from here you can select clear uh, this slide, the narration on this slide, or all narrations. Just be careful you don't choose the all narrations unless you really intend to do that. So you can immediately clear it and you can press record and do it all over again. On the bottom, notice all the annotation tools which will allow you to draw and highlight and so on to illustrate and uh, indicate various points as you speak. On the lower right hand side, notice there's a video camera icon. If you press this icon, this button will turn on your camera and allow you to have a picture in picture on this slide and that will show your face as you're speaking. And finally, in the lower left hand corner, notice the timing and it's going to tell you how many minutes and seconds uh, on this particular slide for recording and also out of how many total minutes and seconds and that will allow you to be able to monitor your total time so that you can ensure that you're going to actually do a micro lecture and not do a 45 or 50 minute presentation. One hint as you're recording narration, after you press the record button for a slide, just pause for about a second 
before and also after speaking before you press the stop button. And that's to ensure that you have not cut off your words because it's easy to cut them either at the beginning or the end and either lose the first word or so or lose the last word of your narration on a slide. When you're finished creating this narration, you're now ready to create a video. First, I suggest make sure you save, and in fact, save often because when you're working with higher level multimedia, it's easy to have a problem and have the system shut down and you lose your work. But after you save the PowerPoint, then go to File, Save As, and select MPEG-4 Video. Now, allow a little time because it may take a half hour or more to render the video uh, from the PowerPoint presentation. When it's completed, you will have an MPEG video ready for uploading. Where are you going to upload your video? Well, if you upload to YouTube, the nice thing is you will have a streaming video, meaning that the user will not have to download the entire video and wait for the whole thing to download before it starts to play. It will play immediately. In your school, you may have access to G apps. At Ms. Recordia, all of our students and faculty have access to G apps. So if you click into G apps, uh, you can then click the options button to see more options that are available. And one of those options is YouTube. After entering YouTube through G apps, on the left-hand panel, click on Your Videos, and then in the upper right, click on the little video camera and select Upload Video, and then simply follow the instructions. For the second half of this video, let's now consider how to use PowerPoint to create a PowerCast. While typically teachers use PowerPoint as a teaching aid for their live classes, if creatively used, teachers can also use PowerPoint to create standalone computer-based teaching modules. So let's explore this. Let's explore the use of PowerPoint as a platform to deliver CBT. Let's take a look at creating action buttons and working with navigation and also what kind of interaction can you put into a PowerPoint file that's designed this way? First, you create the PowerPoint, and then you record narration as we indicated in the first part of this video. Then we have to create a navigation scheme. Realize that we're going to have to add forward and back buttons to every slide and a way to exit the presentation. Because when we're finished, ultimately we're going to turn off the navigational capabilities, the, the typical navigation, the way it's conducted in PowerPoint. And the system will only accept button presses from students. So let's take a look at creating navigation. On every slide, we're going to create a next and a previous button. If you create one set and keep it standardly in the, in the corners, typically consistency would dictate uh, place the forward button in the lower right-hand corner and make the button small. And also, uh, conversely, we want to put the go back button in the left-hand corner and keep it relatively small. If you create one set of buttons like this, you can then simply copy and paste them onto every slide. You have to plan where and how and when the users can exit the application. And we'll do that by placing an end show button. Now, uh, you can call it end, you can call it exit the application, uh, you can put whatever words you want on the button, but somehow we have to allow for users to leave. Because the resulting file will not be a traditional PowerPoint file, where people will simply click and advance slides. Um, it's a CBT, a computer-based application. 
uh, what, uh, which I term a power cast, what you can do is add buttons and other techniques in PowerPoint to allow users to navigate to places and to interact with the application so that they're just not sitting and passively watching, but they're actually working on things, touching things, and making it interactive. When you're finished creating the presentation, then we're going to click the slideshow menu option. We're going to select setup show, and we're going to press the radio button called browsed at a kiosk full screen. Now what this will do is, as soon as you turn this on, which is why it has to be your last step, this will turn off traditional navigation in PowerPoint. So if someone is on a slide and they click, nothing is going to happen. The only thing that's going to happen is what you have prepared through action buttons. So let's look at a few basic slides uh, that we use strictly for the purpose of considering how to set up navigation. So if I accept that this is my first slide, I'm going to go Insert and Shapes. I'm going to go down to find those action buttons. And I can use the icons that they provide. I can use this right arrow. I'll put a small button down there. And it's suggesting the next slide, which is right on target. Now I'm going to copy that one. Let me move to the next slide and paste. And I'm now going to create another button like it, but to do the opposite. So let me go ahead and now take a drag out a left button. Right now I'm going to drag it over this button just for consistency. Previous slide, good. Now I'm going to pull this over here and I'll use those guidelines that are provided by PowerPoint so I can make sure that they're lined up. I want to make it very consistent, very balanced. Now, I see that I've got two buttons that are going to work well for me. The, the next question I have is, where and when do I want students to be able to exit this presentation? Now, maybe I only want to do that on a main screen, maybe on a menu screen. Maybe I want to give them the option to, to break out of this application at any time. So let's say I'm, I want to create it at any time. So I'm going to go and say Insert Shapes, and I'm going to go down and get a button. I'm going to take the custom, the blank button right now, and again for consistency, I'm going to drag it over the top of this existing button to get the same size. And I want to make this End Show. So let me go find that. Here's End Show. and. I'm now going to take this, maybe I'll place this in the middle so the student can always see how to, how to bail out of the application as needed. And now I can say end or exit. And I'll go play with the font here and make it consistent. And now, once I have this, I'm going to click on the first button, hold the control key in the PC world, and the control key will allow me to select multiple buttons. I'm going to control C to copy, move to the next slide, control V, control V, slide four, control V, control V. And when I get to the very last one, now there's no place to go after it, they just end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and remove the forward button because there is no forward, there's only exit. So I'm going to create my exit button here. So I can say exit, or I can say end, however I want to do that. Finally, let's consider a few design issues that are associated with PowerCasts. Because a PowerCast is not a traditionally used PowerPoint presentation to support a live classroom, and it's also not a video, where students will just watch it passively. This can be a computer-based training module that will allow interactivity for your students and the application. 
uh, use text and voiceovers to present the content. So don't feel badly about adding more text in this kind of presentation than you typically would when you're speaking and using PowerPoint as the, as the backdrop. You would typically use less text on, in that situation. But here, this is more of a computer-based training activity. So use text and also use voiceovers to both present the content. Use tools available in PowerPoint to uh, interact. So use action buttons to link to videos, to link to web pages, to provide audio feedback, to ask a question and provide some visual feedback to learners. Use action buttons to create sound navigation through the, uh, throughout the application. Use invisible action buttons and also return buttons to create menu type interaction and navigation. And think about creating a menu that will allow multiple paths through the material to meet learners where they're at. Let's take a look at how to do these things. Here I have created a menu using action buttons. So I would simply go into each of these and I would say under action settings, I would say to hyperlink to a particular slide. Like in this case, I'm going to jump to slide, to the very next slide to review the material. And I would do that with the rest of these as well. Now, when I review the material, this is going to be my navigation scheme. Every time the learner completes some portion, some unit of this application, he or she will return back to this slide. Then I'm going to have my main exit right here. Now, when I click on this button, review the material, and notice, by the way, this is providing multiple paths through the material, depending what the purpose of your application is. Students who simply need a review could click on review. If they just need to see an example and see if they need to review it, they could click on that second button. If they wanted to watch a video that would describe it better or provide a video example or provide another take on the steps involved in that particular task, they could click that button. Or if they just wanted to get some hands-on with it, they could click on the final button in order to get to that piece. Now, if you had a software, some app that would be a simulation, you could add a link into that as well and run that application. Now, let's focus on the, on the uh, navigation. So review the material. That's going to take them to this slide. And I'm saying here this would simply be the first slide that would prevent inf present information. And here will be, um, I'm just allowing two slides in this case for demo purpose. This would be the last slide in this review section. Notice I've continued this, this scheme that I tried before, and I have these two buttons, a forward and a back. Now, in the case of the, um, the fact that we're going to take them in this scheme back to this slide, I'm going to call this the home. So instead of having an exit here, then when I exit, I'm going to have them come back to here and exit out. So I'm going to insert another button. I'm going to insert the home button. I'm going to put that right in the middle. And also keep it small, I'll keep it consistent. And it says the first slide, in this case, it's not the first slide here, so I'm going to specify which slide it is. Because maybe my first slide would be um, like a, just an opening screen and credits and, and various other information. Maybe you just want to go to that menu slide. So there it is, this is going to take them back. I would now take this and I would paste this through all of the various slides here. Because at any point, they can now get back to here, and then they can, uh, they can exit when they're ready. So as I look at this, here's the review. Um, when I look at the final slide to review the material, right now only two slides, I don't really need a forward button. Because forward would, where's that going to take them? We ultimately want them to go back to the menu. So in this case, on the final slide of each section, I'm going to get rid of the forward button, and I'm going to put the home here. I mean, to be consistent, you could say I'll have 
a forward and I'll have a home. In this case, both would take them back to this menu slide. Now, another thing that we could do, and notice what are some of the activities. Here we're going to review. Here we're going to give them an example so they'll see something here. Here we can watch a video. We're going to have them watch a video. Remember that you can use an action button. So even when the navigation is turned off here, we can use a navigation button in order to uh, an action button to do something, to navigate somewhere or do something. So here I could say navigate to a URL and it would be something youtube.com and then whatever that URL would be. I'm just making it up right now. So even when navigation is turned off, they can still click on this button. It'll open up a browser and navigate them out to YouTube. Now instead of the, the menu that we looked at, we could also do another menu. Let me pause for one second, let me talk about this. What kind of activity could we have them do? Well, if it's computer-based training, unless you're actually designing an app that will provide different activities, you could link to a Word document here. You could describe a paper-based or other uh, tactile activity, and you could place that information right here and uh, as part of your class, you could say, do this particular thing, and then ultimately submit this to the instructor. So finally, let's look at another menu type, and this we looked at uh, at our first video for this week's class. How would I make this work? Well, what I could do here is, so here's the get started. That would take me to a slide, and let's say I had three different lessons, and if I wanted to provide some additional assistance and so on, remember that I could take an action button. So I'm going to take a, an action button here. I'm going to take the blank one and say I want them to get started here. I'm going to be liberal when I drag out the size of this button in case they click not a precisely in the place. And I would specify some slide to go to. In this case, I don't have one. So I'm just going to say the next slide. I'll go up to Shape Fill get rid of the fill of the button. I'm going to go to the outline and get rid of the outline. Notice the button is still there. So now at this point, if the user clicks on this button when the show is running, that will now navigate them. So this is another way of doing the menu based on metaphor. Now, if I wanted to, and if I've got a number of slides for each piece of the content, I could then, I could take um, a drawing object here, whether it's a shape or uh, if it's a little block of color, and I could put or some kind of marking, and I could put that marking in here and make this. So it's very small right now, but the user will detect it, and I can fill that with a brighter color. And on on subsequent slides, I could add more of these blocks until finally, using this metaphor, uh, the student can see, oh, well, we're just about done, and oh, we've got a bunch of those blocks in, uh, we're now finished with that, with that section, with that unit. And finally, don't forget that down here, this is one graphic, so I, I don't just need to drag out an action button over the top of this if I don't want to. I can go in and just say insert an action, and then I would say let's exit out of here. So here I will look for my end show button, and that will cause the application to, to terminate. And finally, just as a reminder, do not forget to turn off normal PowerPoint navigation by going to the Slideshow tab and selecting Set Up Slideshow and choose Browse at a Kiosk. And also, don't forget to save it as a PowerPoint file. Just do a regular save. In this case, do not save it as a video. Otherwise, it will not be interactive for the students. Let's take a look at it. As my final step, I'm going to go to Slideshow, Set Up Show, and I'm going to select Browse at a Kiosk. By default, it's going to be presented by a speaker this time, let's say browsed at a kiosk. 
I've now turned off navigation. When I run the show, now we'll find out if our navigation scheme really does work. Definitely test this before you share with students. I can click on review the material and so I move into the first slide of the review of material. Notice by the way if I click around navigation is turned off. The only thing that I'm going to be able to interact with, uh, with this application through is going to be these action buttons. I could click on a button. Sure enough I'll travel forward. I could travel back. I could click on the home to take me back to this home screen, this menu. I could have them click on see an example, watch a video. They could say I'm going to do an activity. And we saw this activity already. There are hot spots here. When they click on a hot spot, sure enough it's an action button so it will work. And then we could say return to the microscope and they could click on another hot spot and learn some more material. Notice when they click on they can read material and they're so they're doing more viewing here um, so they can read and they can uh, do also some interaction. Finally, when they're ready to exit the application, this scheme has them coming back to this menu, this main screen, this home screen. Click on exit and then they will, they will exit out of this application. In this video, to summarize, we looked at how PowerPoint allows two ways for us to record video and audio. First of all, we can create a straight up video with the audio voiceover and animation and save it as a video. And we can even take it up to YouTube. And finally, we could also create a PowerCast. Don't miss our fourth video from class week number four uh, series in which we're going to look at designing a Prezi.